This is our campus, madam. Right. Make up. What is the capacity of that auditorium? 1500 madam. Oh wow, that's good. Good afternoon, one and all. I am P. Sai Pralika of 2nd M. Pham Department of Pharmaceutics, Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Vishnu College of Pharmacy is the only registered pharmaceutical research center under Andhra University. Our faculty members receive grant from AICTE, CSIR, DBT, DST, etc. Vishnu College of Pharmacy is the first pharmaceutical college in Andhra Pradesh accredited by NAC Bangalore. Now I call upon Dr. K.S. Natrat, sir, Principal of Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy to give a welcome note on today's session. Thank you, Pravalika. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Vandana, Madam, speaker of today's event and participants of webinar, very warm welcome you all. First day of this webinar, entitled is Recent Trends in Pharmaceuticals and Novel Drug Delivery Systems from 21 to 23 March 2022. Uh, Dr. Vandana, Madam, have a, a 30 years of experience in academia in prestigious institute in India like ICT Mumbai. We are very fortunate to see you, madam, and listen to your lecture and a topic entitled on scalable nanosystems for diagnosis, prophylaxis, and treatment of infectious diseases. Thank you, madam, for your acceptance. And namaste, madam. Thank you for Thank organizers you. for giving opportunity to welcome Dr. Vandana, madam. Over to Pravalika. Thank you, madam. My pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I'm going to a brief, brief introduction of the uh, today's speaker, guest lecturer. It is my immense pleasure to introduce the great personality, Dr. Vandana Patrawale. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, Dr. Vandana Patrawale, ma'am, is currently a professor of pharmaceutics at the Institute of Chemical Technology, Mumbai, India. She has around 30 years of teaching and research experience. She has over 200 refereed publications with over 9,235 citations, 22 granted patents, 20 patents in pipeline, and two trademark registers.
Shall I begin the lecture? If... Sorry, madam, there is an interruption. In the... Can start the session, madam. Sorry. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And uh, my privilege to be here speaking to you. Kindly confirm if the slide deck is visible. Yes, madam. It's visible, madam. Uh, and is it in the full presentation mode? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Yeah. So uh, today's talk would be on scalable nanosystems. Oh. And it is in the Mail open is Mail. Mail question you done in the moment. Hmm. Can I can't read Mail open yen. Are the registration link? Mail key meeting link. Organizers, kindly mute everyone. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so scalable nanosystems for diagnosis, prophylaxis, and treatment of infectious diseases. And as principles are introduced, I am from Institute of Chemical Technology, which is located in Mumbai. But now we have two more campuses. We have one campus in Orissa, Bhubaneswar. Another one is in Jalna, Aurangabad, that's in Maharashtra. This institute has given about 19 Padma awardees. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. So thanks again uh, to Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy, uh, AP, for this particular national seminar and inviting me for the same. Since the title is on infectious diseases, you know, I thought uh, if I get you familiarized with top 10 causes of death, you would notice that many of them are infections. So world actually is headed in a direction where we as formulators need to work in areas of infectious diseases. Trends actually in the population statistics have profound effect on distribution of infectious diseases. If you have to look at reasons why, you can see that. In the list which was issued by World Health Organization in 2019, we had influenza, Ebola, measles, dengue, Zika virus, HIV as six of the top 10 threats. And from 19 to 21, you've already seen one more virus creating a havoc. So that definitely indicates that we need to work in the direction of tackling emerging diseases or re-emerging infectious diseases. This slide is a little populated slide, but it is very, very clear from here that there are many infectious diseases which are indicated by red balls as newly emerging, like Ebola, monkeypox, you may have Influenza are different, newer strains. There are some which are re-emerging. So if you have to look at COVID, COVID actually comes in the re-emerging technique because we've already seen MERS COVID earlier. And then there are some which are deliberately emerging. So these are definitely bio wars. So let's not talk about them. We need to talk about what can be done? On one side, if you look at the statistics, there was significant decrease in mortality. Decrease in mortality, okay? That happened because, yes, we have switched from conventional formulation to newer formulations. But yet, 
it's not that people are not getting affected they are slowly becoming resistant to many of the drug moieties combinations were tried certain herbal moieties were tried but each comes with its own set of advantages and disadvantages so there has been struggle with ongoing pathologies along with the new ones which have emerged in last three decades and now of course because of covid we know that we need to look at very closely not only on existing mutations but can we predict in advance what could be the mutations which would affect our overall health and then tackle with it now why is it that there is rise of these infectious diseases especially in indian scenario this can be actually tracked to increasing urbanization and human mobility has played a very very big role look at these local trains you know in which we mumbai cars all have to travel there's no place to stand the platform this caters to about 7 million travelers daily daily 7 million and again if you look at metro trains about 2 and 1/2 million so based on this you know actually studies have shown that nearly 40% of population of new delhi have been infected by dengue or will get affected by dengue at least once in their lifetime same is the case with mumbai we talk about diseases like malaria tuberculosis viruses like zika all of them are affecting majorly because it's the population traveling in trains so if that is happening obviously it is increasing the burden on underfunded and under resourced health system covid-19 obviously has put more strain on our healthcare resources but you know god has been very kind if it was not for companies like bharat biotech as well as you know serum institute we would not have got vaccinated and then what is happening in other developing countries would have been our fate too so across a broad spectrum we all know that these infectious diseases are either the vector borne air borne or water borne you are lucky here at ap but look at maharashtra we have all kinds of diseases we have chikungunya dengue malaria we do have water borne like typhoid hepatitis a e which also can lead to mortality deaths gastroenteritis due to no pollution of water and of course conjunctivitis which is seasonal but that says that we need to again why i am emphasizing is we need to work in these areas rather than working in lifestyle diseases but the whole world is doing work in those diseases if we do not work in these diseases others will develop the solutions and they will come to india at prices which are not affordable so can we put in our concentrated efforts in tackling with these diseases you will be surprised in this diseases leprosy is indicated recently i was talking to a clinician who is heading a department derma department in maharashtra and he mentioned this is reemerging now and if leprosy strikes back definitely you know that person will be immunocompromised and any of the virus or bacterial infections he can succumb to leprosy is one of course but apart from that so in these which is that disease which definitely is biggest 
public health problem, that's tuberculosis. We are also working in tuberculosis. Right now, you know that there is a four drug combination given as first line therapy. It's given by oral route, but we are looking at, can we make nanoparticles and give them by pulmonary route so that at least those patients which are affected by pulmonary TB can get cured and they need not take dose on a daily basis. Majorly the resistance is getting developed because people do not comply with the dosage regimen. So can we give one puff which can take care for a month and then you call people after a month. So that's the kind of work. But today I'm not presenting that work. I have some other data which is ready. And I thought, let me focus on that. So we as pharmacists have a lot of challenges to tackle because there are lack of medical countermeasures. On one side, drug resistance goes on increasing. We need to tackle with human animal interface also. There are many diseases which get to human beings from animals and vice versa. Doctors who are working, farmers who are working with these animals, they have occupational hazard. You've seen in COVID times, the fate of doctors who are treating COVID patients. And then there are many other factors, including funding and geographic factors, which we need to take care. How can we overcome these challenges? As mentioned earlier, we need to take up research on priority in infectious diseases. At every forum, I have been talking about that. Yet how many have started working in infectious diseases? See, you can check with your local practitioners and see whether you can provide solution to them. This way research can go on. So you need to come up with advanced products, need to at the same time develop robust immunity protocols. Right now, a kid when he or she is born, you know, vaccination continues till five years or so, but more so the initial few months. So can we combine those vaccines and give that as one vaccine? A lot of work is needed in that direction too. Let's move on to the work. So first work which I'm going to present is simple anti-HIV preparation. So as it says, beat this thing. If you look at HIV virus, it's an envelope virus. You need to understand it's an envelope virus. COVID is also an envelope virus. Why I'm showing you this study is this has led to treatment for COVID also. So if you have one treatment for an envelope virus, in case of emergency, you can try it whether it is working for other viruses or not. In fact, as Paiwan Neto said, virus of prejudice assails more than the disease itself. So we need to take care and see that this particular virus is absolutely a no-no. It's taken care of. There's a lot of HIV-related stigma which is associated with HIV-positive people for no fault of them. Maybe there is someone who has got pricked accidentally, a doctor who is treating the patient, getting pricked accidentally by the needle which was used by the patient. That happens. I know of cases where they have to go on such treatment regime. Nearly two out of three say it's very difficult to tell others about HIV infection. One out of three feel guilty or ashamed of their HIV status. One in four say that being HIV positive makes them feel worthless. See, there is a social stigma which is associated. Maybe father is HIV positive and then it comes in kids for no fault of them. So that means again that we need to take care of this particular disease and see that 
HIV virus is eradicated. If you look at again the statistics, it says that deaths are decreasing. Definitely HIV related deaths are decreasing because we are able to diagnose it much faster than earlier. But there are many, many people who are living with HIV, which is in millions, right? So we need to again do something for millions of these people. So what did we do? We came up with a very simple microemulsion-based nanomicrobicide for prophylaxis of HIV. And when we had started this work in 2018, there were about 4. Point, in fact, 5.9 million people living with HIV in India itself. We looked at what is available in the market. There were physical barriers available, like people are supposed to you know, wear either a condom before sexual intercourse. Reports of circumcision were there. And then chemical barrier also people had started working. There were gels, tablets, rings available in the market. But no topical efficient product, those which were introduced were also taken back from the market because they did not perform well. So when we started work, Tinofovir had cleared phase three. So we thought we'll formulate Tinofovir. But along with that, can we formulate all herbal formula? For doing research, what we need to do is understand the pathophysiology of the disease condition very well. So we started with understanding of the virus itself first. And how does it get transmitted and get propagated in the body? So when we did that, we knew that the RNA of that is in the core, but on the surface, you do have GP120 and GP41. And it is using that GP120 and GP41, the matured HIV-1 virion attaches to the surface. So the vaginal surface, when we talk about, will bind using GP41 and GP120. So there are receptors and co-receptors like CD4 and CCR5, CXCR4, which are used for these binding purposes. It fuses, goes inside. You can see that the coating is removed. After that, the genetic material, that's RNA, will get inside the cytoplasm. So reverse transcription happens, moving on to formation of pro-integration complex and then translation. So if this is a process, we wanted to see whether we can have some preparation which can add initial stages itself so that if there are, you know, there are sex workers, who are also hesitant, they can apply. Women who have their partners as HIV positive, they can also apply this kind of topical formulation much before the intercourse and get prevented from HIV. So we formulated, as I said, a microemulsion. And that microemulsion, as you know, is a mixture of lipid, surfactant, co-surfactant and water. The lipid which we, I have now named it as M-lipid because the formulation has been given to industry. I cannot reveal it, but this M-lipid itself had good activity, anti-HIV activity. So we thought, can we make a microemulsion using M-lipid along with surfactants and co-surfactants? And can that act as for prophylaxis of HIV? So, yes, we did various cell line testings, as you can see, TZM cells, where we showed that M-lipid definitely gave us 
good viability that means the routine surface this normal cell membrane it is not affecting and this was one reason why none of the marketed formulations existed because anything which came in market was affecting normal membranes much more what we wanted is it should affect virus which is very very clearly seen in this slide when we did beta galactosidase assay you can see that as we go on increasing the concentration you no know, you are getting better and better inhibition of virion so you need to determine what is the ic50 value which in this case was 24.23 micrometer now this is of the pure lipid when we have formulated it as a micro emulsion along with our ingredients it has given us much better activity and this is p24 assay this assay goes on for a longer period of time and you can see over 10 days the data which i have given so by this slide what i am trying to say is that m lipid had safety higher but efficacy was also very good so if you want to formulate any platform technique for virus antiviral preparations this will be a good that also if it is a envelope virus so m lipid based micro emulsion which we prepared it gave us early stage inhibition that is what you were looking at right we said whether it can give prophylaxis that means even 3 hours before intercourse if women apply this particular gel partner first will not know and secondly it is going to kill that particular virus and we have tested at variety of concentrations so it gave us early stage inhibition then it was important to do condom compatibility test why because most of the formulation again i am repeating which came in the market and were withdrawn were surfactant based and those surfactants actually teared off the condom whereas you can see we have tested various condoms regularly routinely used ones and we have formulated both oil in water as well as water in oil micro immersion based gels both of them have given us good compatibility with condom then we looked at whether the preparation was taken up i told you it has to be early stage inhibitor to act as fusion inhibitor to act as prophylactic now the next question to be answered was what if it goes in if it goes in will it be able to release the cargo if it can do that that means not only in prophylaxis but this can be useful in treatment too and here very clearly you can see no blue is the one which stains nucleus that is dapi dapi dye is used to stain nucleus and what you can see in red here is our rhodamine loaded preparation so it is getting concentrated in cytoplasm which again says that you have this particular platform which can be used to deliver small moieties it can also be used to deliver bio molecules so tomorrow if i want to come up with gene delivery i'll be able to do that too if i have to do protein delivery i can do that if i have small molecule delivery i can do that if it is herbal moiety i can do that too so at icit as i said we aim at working on platforms which can be used in variety of ways so now our studies are going on can we make micro needles using this can we make vaginal rings using this so research goes on and we go on improving but to start with this was the easiest way forward 
make a topical gel which is effective. And when we did anti-HIV essays, you can see that selectivity index was 80. Marketed preparations give this index about 40, which is almost doubled. And cell viability, CC50, was more than 1,000 micromolar. That says, if I have to make a formulation like vaginal ring, I might have to increase the load of this M lipid. It can still be done because CC50 is also very, very high. So what is very important is not only how you look at data, but how, how you interpret the data and how you use it for future purposes. Having done this, we formulated n number of preparations. Now we have tenofovir, we have herbal drug formulations, individuals, we have herbal drug combinations, combination, we have tenofovir with herbal drug combination. So likewise, we have now evaluated at least 20 preparations. And currently the studies are going on in primates. So now you can see here three moieties. I'm sure all of you have eaten these pomegranate, pea granatum, C sinensis, and C longa. So this is curcumin, your haldi, and C sinensis. All of these, you will be astonished that if you see the literature, they have been reported to show GP120, CD4 binding inhibition activity. And I told you in the hypothesis itself, we want this particular binding to be inhibited. But no one has tried it in combination. And of course, no one has tried it in the platform which we have used. So this is now a patent, granted patent by, this was a DBT ICMR project. And of course, the formulation is so simple that it has been transferred to the industry. All they have to do is Take lipid, take surfactant, co-surfactant and water, make a microemulsion and put these three drugs which solubilize in that phase. Now, moreover, on one side we were looking at anti-HIV activity. If I do not add any of these actives, that gel can act as a lubricant. So that becomes one product. This gel also has permissible activity. So obviously you can see the immense benefits which it will give. Plus another drawback of existing marketed formulation was that they were killing the microbiota. They were killing lactobacilli. And you, I'm sure all of you know that lactobacilli and E. coli are necessary to maintain that acidic pH in vagina which is very important. Otherwise, it will lead to many other infections. So our formulation not only was prophylactic, not only it could be used as treatment strategy, but also gave these additional benefits. So DBT ICMR had sponsored the project for rectal microbicide. Rectal, why? Because, you know, homosexuality is on rice. But... Having got those results, we thought we retested it even for vaginal microbicidal activity and we did get very good activity. Moving ahead, we thought, can it be used as permicidal plus anti-HIV? And the results are excellent. So that was first study. The second study which I'm going to give you is surpassing conventional barriers. And from here itself, you would know that I'm going to now talk about something which has to go to the brain. And you know, anything to be delivered to brain is a task. And at that, Thai City, we aim at doing things in a very simple way so that they can reach market. Talking about malaria, I'm sure to pharma crowd, I need not tell you what malaria is, but you should know 
that almost 85% of global burden is carried by India and sub-Saharan Africa. If that is so, why will West work for this? We need to work in this direction and see that we eradicate malaria. This is a malaria heat map. So you can see areas of high prevalence. You can see areas of moderate prevalence. And there are some regions where nothing happens to people due to malaria. But India very, very clearly in Africa, you can see, is red and orange. So that gives you enough food for thought to work in this direction. I've started working in this with my first PhD itself and till date, again, we have transferred many technologies and we continue to work because challenges are many. Now in the slide, what I'm depicting is a normal cell, an infected cell. When I say cell, it's red blood cells. So infected red blood cells has these knobs like structure. And of course, because a parasite has invaded in them, you know that parasite multiplies inside the RBCs. What was the task which we took? We took the task that we'll make a formulation which will be useful for cerebral malaria. Why cerebral malaria? Because when you see the WHO, Reports, it says there's nearly 100% mortality if P. falciparum, you know, mosquito, you know, P, P stands for plasmodium. If P. falciparum bites, 100% mortality. So that means very, very quick, you should get the therapy. What did we do? We aimed at NLC-based combination therapy. Now, what is this NLC? NLC stands for nanostructured lipid carrier. The last case study, I told you microemulsions are made up of oil, surfactant, co-surfactant, and water. NLCs are also made up of these four ingredients only. Now, only difference is in NLCs, in addition to oil, you have solid lipid too. So when we looked at guidelines for treatment of malaria, you can see artemether and lumifentrin is a top. But till date, there is no IV formulation available. Oral will take time to act. So we decided to make this combination and we became the world's first people to have IV formulation of artemether lumifentrin combination for cerebral malaria. I've already told you there is 100% mortality from this cerebral malaria. So definitely there is unmet need. So we identified the lipids. Obviously you have to do screening of lipids, surfactant, co-surfactants and pick up only those in which drug is highly soluble because this drug Artemether is taken at 40 milligram, lumefentrin at 800 milligram. Very high dose. So our idea was, can we make nanoformulations? By making nanoformulation, will we be able to reduce dose? Will we be also able to reduce frequency of administration? And first, can we make such a formulation? So yes, in a very systematic way we went. And what you can see in this particular slide is we had initially started with monotherapy, only artemether. Parasite load is 0% with our formulation. When we did combination and did in vitro release studies, this is what we expected because NLC has liquid lipid. Some drug is gone in liquid lipid, so that will give you burst. Rest of the drug is in solid lipid, so that will give you prolonged action. Of course, it was 60 to 100 nanometer. Then we moved on to pharmacodynamic studies of combination versus the marketed formulation. And what you can see here in green is a marketed formulation. So till the time it was given, it's Peter's four-day test, you know, it's known as because 
zero day you give parasite zero day itself you also give formulation so obviously in blank and placebo it will increase but marketed formulation also increased was seen with the wills our formulation combination you can see parasites are at zero level not only the therapeutic dose but also at one fifth dose one twentieth of dose one fiftieth of dose so that gave us confidence to move further and then we did the other model other model is just like how malaria will affect patients you know once you have malaria you have symptoms when you have symptoms you go to doctor so same way here parasites are inoculated so the parasite count increases and after parasite count increases you administer your formulation in this case again you can see that one tenth of the dose could totally clear the parasite other doses like 150th and all some amount definitely was seen later on but one tenth the dose gave complete parasite clearance now if you compare this with oral dose oral dose has to be given four times daily versus this is once so doses frequency has gone down plus the dose has gone down after getting this we move to cerebral malaria this has to be done in c57 mice which are black mice and of course 50% of these mice will get cerebral malaria you need to monitor their rectal temperature you need to monitor their gait the way they walk because they will behave as paralyzed animals and again you can see marketed as given recrudescence that means it's not very effective but our formulation once the treatment is given maintains a parasite zero cost that means the mice are completely cured and this particular patent has been a granted patent and not only for malaria you can see that i have taken a patent for treating parasite infections so this is another learning that if you feel that your formulation has potential for other parasitic infections see that you incorporate drug moieties in your platform and test them so with this patent i could easily transfer the technology this will clearly prove what i just said what you will see in the slide these are infected rbcs which are seen with the granular mosses you can also see in the slide normal rbcs where you don't see granular masses because there is no parasite which has gone in and what you see in the red is nlc which is rhodamine labeled when i start the video you will see that this rhodamine labeled nlcs which we have formulated will go only in those rbcs which are infected very clearly you can see it goes only where there is granular mass doesn't go to normal ones very very selective uptake so since we had done the study with tifr we did a mechanistic study to understand why this happens so for that we had to make formulations with different lipids of the same size again nano size 60 to 100 we had to make uh, formulations with many of the polymers which are routinely used and then show that our formulation is a very special formulation what it does actually is if the parasite mistake these lipidic nanoparticles as their food and they take it in when they take the formulation in mitochondrial calcium comes on the surface which creates lot of reactive oxygen species and which kills this parasites nothing happens to the other cells no nothing happens to other normal cells beat rbcs wbcs platelets or anything again this video will very clearly show this is for the marketed group you can see when after treatment is given where daily treatment is given they are not able to walk their gait is affected whereas our formulation animals in fact are very very active veterinary doctor used to say 
that they behave as control animals so much so that they can be used after a washout time for next study with this success of course we move forward and then clinical studies are going on in this formulation but what i would like to say here is simple formulation again just mixing so that it is scalable and when industry takes it there is no problem so that was about therapy the diagnosis front we started with brucellosis and now of course we are working in many including covid we had a dbt grant for covid diagnosis what is importance of our method we are using a method which does not use blood it uses saliva and urine now brucellosis is a condition which primarily affects livestock cows pigs goats and from them it is transmitted to humans also either through the meat products or through the dairy products or farmers who are working very closely with these animals also would definitely get brucellosis what have we done as i told you we have developed a point of care kit point of care current cost of kit is 200 us dollars we thought can we tell our farmers to spend so much answer was no so we looked at the total diagnostic market understood the statistics and then came out with the kit which could use it if that someone doesn't want to hear the lecture he or she might quit currently there are many instrumental methods which are used there are non instrumental methods also which can be used so we focused on non instrumental that is lateral flow assay kit and what have we done we have developed fluorescent nano sensors which can get associated with antigens as a result of which they will give us result which similar to rt pcr analyzer so what you can see in this slide is how is the lateral flow kit working it works by capillary action what has to be done is on this cassette you have to have a nitrocellulose film you need to put your sample on the sample pad the sample would be either the saliva or urine so due to capillary action it will move further and react with whatever you have lined on this particular kit whether it is antigen or whether it is antibodies it could be both ways so it could act as antigen detecting kit if antibodies are on the slide and vice versa so this particular kit we have used for detecting brucella antibodies in milk samples so if the sample is positive both the test and control line glow whereas if it is negative it's only the control line which will glow control line has to be there just like you know you for uv you have a control you know you need to calibrate same way here also we need to calibrate and what you can see here is icdt which is our kit giving same result with respect to sensitivity specificity as elisa and pcr the other things which are available in the market are not very specific so they are no good so we had to compare of course with pcr and elisa so both with serum and milk you can see that icdt is working really well this also is a granted patent and the president of india awarded uh, our student who has started now he has a startup now moving on to since we had done this work we thought can we give one full 
solution to this problem. And solution was, can we develop vaccine? It was helpful because we got Bill Melinda Gates grant for this vaccine. On basis of this vaccine, we have now have DBT grant for COVID vaccine. So what did we do? We made super critical technology assisted vaccines, a green technology. You do not use any solvents. All you do is you use your polymer. Polymer which you have used in this case is xyloglucan, which is a mucoadhesive polymer. In that we have loaded antigen, which is lipopolysaccharide. It's one step reaction. So you take a chamber, into which you take polymer along with antigen, allow supercritical to carbon dioxide to come in the chamber, it will dissolve it and then pass it through a very small orifice to give either microparticles or nanoparticles. Very systematically, again, we have done the studies, recorded the size, did the TEM, all the individual tests which need to be done on this nasal vaccine, what is the most important point in this vaccine? It doesn't require refrigeration. So you can avoid cold chain transport. Antigen is also released in a slow mode. This is again important because if you want the effect to last for a longer period of time, you need slow release of antigen. I told you we wanted the formulation to be mucoadhesive because we intend giving it through nasal route, no prick. Many people are very scared of prick. So we'll make a nasal vaccine. In this case, we've already again done the studies, but in case of COVID studies are going on. So nasal vaccine, which has given us mucoadhesion. So that means it will stay there in the nasal cavity also where APCs, that is antigen presenting cells are present and would be taken up in a manner to give, you can see both IgA and IgG responses. So IgA and IgG response you get if acts as a mucosal boosting agent. No, that means it will give you humoral immunity. So study gave those results. Dominant Th1 mechanism was observed. So definitely. Then we looked at even nasal celiotoxicity because the formulation First time we were studying, it should not affect the cilia. So you can see that cilia were intact. And that gave us confidence to move forward. Even after giving booster dose, cilia was intact. Then we did this bacterial challenge study. These studies were done in US because they require biosafety three, which was not available. We had only 18 months to do all this work. So we had to move fast. So one third of the money went back to US. It came from US, but it went back to US. So in bacterial challenge studies, again, you will see that our NV50, you know, is our vaccine candidate. That is LPS plus seponin plus TSP has given us excellent results. It has reduced the colony forming units, maximal colony forming units, you can see are reduced in spleen, in liver, even in lungs. And this is what gave us you know, confidence to move in for COVID because that also affects lungs. Having done this, I have shown that we have got a protective immunity response. Mice which were primed or given booster dose by nasal route they gave cell-mediated as well as humoral immunity. Both are important. You should get fast action, but you should get memory response also so that in future, if you are getting infected the same agent, your body is ready to attack. So results actually emphasized that you can use a green technology for making a vaccine, which can be termed as a green vaccine. So we have used ingredients, again, xyloglucan is from natural source. We have used an adjuvant also, which is from a natural source. We have not used any solvent. So all in all, it is a green technology. And as I mentioned, again, this third study is also granted patent. 
and we also got grant from bill and minta now that we have got very good results we can apply for next grant which will be now 100 million dollar grant waiting for that opportunity so with that i would like to these are just glimpses from my lab it shows that we are equipped within the lab we have zeta sizer ultra centrifuge we have usp type 4 all the facilities within the lab of course department has many more and the back you can see cell culture lab in fact we through bmg we could in, in fact uh, construct a cell culture lab also these are some of the technologies which we have commercialized so seven of the devices which have been commercialized in 65 countries some of the nano products which are commercialized this particular vaccine is in phase 2 trials and it's a very recent product which uh, got commercialized a topical uh, anti shafting gel so yes at vbp lab we work with this motto which is focus so once something is assigned to you focus on that and work i'll fail in my duty if i do not thank vbp family i call it our research group as family and they not only work on their individual projects but they do chip in whenever there is any industry project or any other project which is just that to be undertaken so with that thank you once again and i am ready to take questions if there are any thank you ma'am now the session is open for queries Ma'am, I have a question. Can I ask you? Please go ahead. Mucosal vaccine delivery is only applicable to uh, Brucellis or other vaccines also. No? no, I just told you. On basis of this, we have got grant for COVID vaccine, right? So okay. it is applicable to any vaccine. In fact, you have to have a platform. Right, nasal epithelial membrane has antigen-presenting cells, which take up any kind of particles. They take up micro particles also, and they take up nano particles also. So, in our earlier study, we had shown that our nano particles are giving better response as compared to micro particles. So, we continued with the nano here. Can be used for any of the antigens. Thank you. any questions only one message i want to pass and that is use simple systems which can be transferred to industry our industry needs them okay ma'am thank you ma'am i thank our guest speaker dr vandana ma'am for throwing light on scalable nano systems for diagnosis prophylaxis and treatment of infectious diseases she shared a lot of new technologies for treating malaria hiv infections your thoughts have enlightened our minds ma'am thank you ma'am for adorning the occasion and uh, sharing your opinions today i cordially thank each and every one for making this session more interesting by your presence thank you thank you. I leave the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Tomorrow also we have session at timing at three thirty. And all of you uh, fill your feed. We will send the feedback forms. Uh, so that we can you can get a certificate thank you